Hello and welcome back to the uh, Dancer uh, course. Uh, we are going to check now uh, what uh, happened with the installation and then we are going to, if it, ha if it was successful, then we are going to write our first, very first ver Dancer program. So we uh, left, out the sli left the slides here in the installation of Dancer when we had uh, run CPAN M Dancer 2 and uh, I switch to the terminal or uh, PowerShell and you can see that it installed 32 distributions. It took quite a while actually. So I, after I finished the, the video recording, I saw that it took a, quite a while. But then uh, again, I'm also running this in a, vir uh, in a virtual box. So I'm running on Linux and then on the virtual box and inside there, there is a window. So it might be slower than, than usual. But anyway, I can go back and run this program uh, that uh, I used uh, previously. So I run Perl minus M, capital M, Dancer 2 immediately. So no spaces there. And then minus E1. And then I, if I run this, it will not say anything, which means uh, unlike earlier when it failed, uh, uh, this means that uh, Dancer 2 is installed. So let's say if I try to say something like Dancer 3, which obviously is not installed because it doesn't even exist, then it tells me uh, it can't locate and you should install it. Um, and yeah, you may need to install. Um, of course, this is a mistake here or not a mistake, it's just a misunderstanding that Dancer 3 is actually not, doesn't, doesn't exist. Uh, but you can see that Dancer 2 just doesn't say anything and that means in this case that's, uh, that's fine. So that's one thing. The other thing that uh, we did and we left uh, sort of running is the unzip of the of all the slides and all the examples so let me switch to the file explorer and here you can see that in the local disk c there are the course that file directory and it created a subdirectory called slides main and within the slides main now let me show you uh, you can find each um, training course uh, uh, let's say i have has its own folder and so everything about Perl is in now. Let me just show you again. So if we switch back to the slides and I go ahead to the next slide, you will see that uh, it says it's okay. It doesn't say it pro uh, properly. So uh, it says that this file is called examples dancer hello world uh, and then the name of the file. Um, actually. Mm, the if you click on this right click on this and you or or you just put the mouse above it you will see that here inside it says in the main uh, that's the branch uh, the name of the branch and then inside there is the pearl and examples and the dancer uh, too so the examples is within the pearl folder because uh, even though uh, the dancer slides are have, have their separate entry, they are part of the uh, larger Perl um, package. So inside here in the slides main, you have to enter the Perl directory. So I'm sorry, this doesn't say it. You'll have to remember that one. And then within there is the same uh, file path as what you can see on the on the slide when you're going there. So if you go there, examples and then dancer here inside, dancer, and then within dancer, you will find the name of the file. So, oh, sorry, it's the subdirectory, hello world, hello world, and there inside you have this uh, app.psgi. So um, either you pick up that file and you use that, or you write your own. So let's uh, try uh, now to run this file um, uh, on our own. So for us, I go switch to this uh, window again. And as you can see here, I am the directory C users Gabor space sabo. So that's my just my user account. I can type in CD and then where, the location where I would like to go. So I it's uh, it's at, it starts uh, from C, so let me go just back to, to C. Actually, I don't even need to type it. I can now just remember if I click here, then it will give me the full path to this directory. So I can, I think I can just copy it with Control C and then come here and hopefully I will be able to paste it. So right click will paste it and then home to jump to the beginning and here now I have CD. And yes, it worked. 
So uh, I will just change the directory to that location in Windows. So now if I type dir, uh, you can see that I, I can see the, the files that are in that directory. Here the same, the files are in the directory. And now let just me explain again something about my, uh, the slides, the way they are. So this up PSGI is actually what we need. The test T is going to be the test file that's actually checking whether our code is working properly. And then there you will find all kinds of files uh, dot out usually that are actually, you don't have to care about them. I keep them around for the slides because I would like to be able to show uh, the output. I don't know here, I think, yeah, this is the output. So in the next slide, you will see that there is uh, some output that I saved already, so I can include it in the slide, and that's I, I'm storing it as dot out. But you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, so it's just a byproduct of, of you looking at the source of my slides. So that's what we have here. And uh, before I explain what's inside, let me see. Let let's see how it works. So here in the slide. Actually, you what you need to uh, write, it says uh, type in placup. Maybe I'll uh, change a little bit the slide to make it clearer. What you need to type on the command line is the uh, command placup. So I went into this directory. I changed the directory with CD here. And now I can run placup. And uh, hopefully it will start running. So yes. So what can we see? Uh, first of all, it says that it's starting a server and it's accepting connections on port on the local host on actually host zero which is the also means the local host on port 5000 and then you also see this uh, pop-up that says that the Perl interpreter so is the, the windows defender uh, nothing to do with with us actually but uh, everything to do with us because we are running on windows and uh, i have this uh, windows firewall enabled which will um, not allow basically access uh, uh, to this um, uh, web application. So what I would like is to enable it. And um, yes, I I don't know why the check is, is check this one. So it says uh, the first one says uh, uh, where to enable it. So the question is where to enable access to this uh, web application. And it's uh, the first checkbox says private networks. That's what I would like actually. And public networks that they also not recommend it. So I have no idea why this is the default here. Uh, that's Windows. What, what you need to do is uh, probably what you want to do is allow the private networks and disable on public networks. And then you say allow access. Okay. This will, uh, and then I think this will make it remember it. And I don't know why it's not going away. Oh, it just takes a couple of seconds. Again, it might be that just my Windows is really slow because it's uh, running on top of um, a virtual box. So now uh, I configure it. I think that's enough for what uh, I have to do it only once and then it will remember it. And then I can open my browser to this URL and I can copy paste it here, copy it or, or not. What you And I could just go to my browser, open a new uh, tab and then I can type in HTTP no S, just uh, two slashes. I can type in zero, I guess, and then 5000. Okay, and it didn't work. Interesting. So HTTP, HTTP 127.0.0.1 con 5000. Okay, so that would be the one that does it work or does it also search for it? Interestingly, it Bing also search for it searches for it. So last try to, su to do it with Bing, with uh, Internet Explorer, HTTP, localhost, and then 5000. And it's still, it seems that it's still searching for it. Interesting. So we'll have to find a different browser, but apparently um, this uh, browser doesn't work the way um, browsers normally work. So the next best thing that we can do is to download Firefox or Chrome, whatever, whatever you prefer. Okay, so let's go to for Firefox, Firefox. Uh, 
and uh, yes, you're already browsing. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Microsoft tells us, but it doesn't work the way we are hoping to work. So we download Firefox now. And then we're going to, we won't wait for this. We're going to do look at this in the, uh, in the next uh, uh, video probably. No, it's, it's already got here. So let me check uh, this one. Okay, and then we can install Firefox and then hopefully that will work better. So let me wait for a couple of seconds. Actually, it really, really bothers me that um, the, the previous one didn't work and I, it really looks strange. So while it's installing, let me uh, try to localhost. But it, it, that, that's, that's what, what we need to do. So I, I'm not sure. It's, it says Bing search engine. I don't know why does it say Bing search engine. So localhost is basically the name of your own computer. Now it worked. Interesting. Once I start to, uh, so either I made a mistake earlier or uh, it got frightened that I started to install Firefox and now it works. So I'm glad it does. Okay. Yeah, you see, by the time uh, Firefox, uh, Firefox inst get installed, uh, it already works. So let me close the Firefox for now. Maybe we'll have to use it later. Uh, so, okay, we are back on uh, our uh, way to uh, write dancer code. So localhost is basically the same uh, as your your computer all the time. And port 5000 is just where it's run, uh, this uh, application is running currently. So in the terminal, uh, in the in the in this window, you can see uh, the access uh, that it accessed the, the the same port. Actually, it says that it was uh, no sorry, it says uh, as if it was accessing a couple of times, um, but for us it didn't. It worked only only this time. Uh, really surprising. Okay, so let's go back to the slide and explain what happens here. So this is just the definition uh, of um, a, a package of a, a per module. Doesn't uh, matter what really what name you use here, um, as long as at the end you'll use the same name and then arrow to app. Uh, then we load the dancer to a module, a semicolon of course, and then we create a route. So the way dancer works is that it maps URL requests to anonymous functions or functions, but they are anonymous usually. So when you visit this website, uh, after you typed in the address, so for example, here at the top, we have the address codemaven.com, then slash and a couple of, uh, the, and, the, and the paths, okay? So uh, the slice directory and in the, inside the dancer directory and then inside this one. In the same way here in this uh, page, we visited the localhost server port 5000 and on this we didn't have to write slash i can add the slash here and then that would uh, lead me to the same place it's just uh, is the same uh, i can also type here something more slash hello for example and then it give me 404 error because this you this pass is haven't been this hasn't been defi defined it also said that it's running dancer 2 version 3 point some 0 0.3 something okay so this is how we define the passes that we are serving okay and now we mapped uh, the slash so the root pass and we haven't mapped the hello one that what was i typed in and then it says that this is the subroutine that uh, runs and whatever this returns is the web page okay so it can return in html and then we will have a nicer web page or it can just basically a, a plain text uh, message and uh, the browser will still display it uh, just as, as uh, text. So that's what we have. Uh, actually, this, this syntax might look a little bit strange if you're a Perl programmer. Uh, what it really happens is that this is uh, the get function that uh, we, we received from the dancer to module automatically. It gets basically a key value pair. So it gets, uh, this is the key and this is a, the, the, the value. The key is just the string, the pass, and the value is an anonymous function. So an anonymous subroutine. So a subroutine that doesn't have a name and uh, don't forget the semicolon here. 
So that's uh, that's one of the cases when after the curly braces you have to put a semicolon because this is a statement and not just uh, a block. So that's it. That's how you uh, write um, um, simple, very simple uh, dancer application. And this is how you run it. And then, of course, you can stop running it. Uh, Windows will ask me uh, if I want to terminate the job and then we are back to the console. And then that's the question. So how do we know that this actually works? And this is, this is what we're going to see in the next video. So see you for now.